In this video, we're going to introduce the concepts of intuitive physics and mental simulation. So in cognition, there's this really fascinating area called intuitive physics. And this picture that we have here provides a good demonstration of this. So we can see that we have this person who's um, halfway up a ladder and the ladder is leaning up against a tree but they're simultaneously chopping the tree down with a chainsaw. And so the idea behind intuitive physics and mental simulation is that we can look at this picture, we can understand what's going on in the state of the world, and we can perhaps simulate forward as to uh, whether a good or bad thing is about to happen. This is a funny meme that um, has been going around the internet for some years and hopefully after just a moment you will see why th this is funny. Now it would be difficult to see how you'd find it funny if you weren't able to understand the world um, as represented in this picture to kind of understand what's going on so the the truck here in the front and the car they're they're obviously not stationary um and so they're moving forward and so you can you can project forward as to what's going going on so this is a, a funny example of mental simulation but how are these things actually studied this is an interesting slide uh, an interesting set of pictures which was presented in a really nice little review paper in Trends in Cognitive Sciences. And what you can see here is a number of schematic images of problems. So in the early study of intuitive physics, participants were presented with kind of pictorial situations as to what was going on. Um, so for example, they solved problems to do with balls bouncing into each other, um, they, uh, for example, were asked if an aeroplane had um, some cargo and it was in flight and it, it let go of the cargo, trace out the path that the cargo would take. Similar situations with, for example, a pendulum, what would happen if the weight of the pendulum was um, let go, if the string broke, What what is the path? that would take. So participants would um, draw this, for example, on bits of paper and they would be rated as, you know, correct or incorrect. And maybe there are different types of ways that you can be incorrect. I'll just mention another couple. So a really interesting one that pops up quite a lot is the um, this use of balls going around curved tubes. So you're imagined to ask, you know, someone has pushed this ball around a curved tube and so what path will it take? So the right answer is that it will go straight forward. But um, a very interesting type of error that people make is that they believe that the curve, that somehow the curved motion will carry on. The water pouring problem is a really interesting one where you might have containers of different widths with a certain amount of liquid in them and you're kind of asked to imagine if they are tilted which one would um, spill first. So the, these are some example problems that were used um, relatively early on in the study of intuitive physics. Now just to really cement these ideas together of um, mental simulation and prediction of the uh, what might happen. So really prediction of what might happen is really the kind of useful thing here. Why are we bothered about mental simulation or anything? Well, one reason is because um, we can predict. And so if we can predict what might happen, if if we do X, Y, or Z, then this is very useful and it might help us avoid accidents or select one of many different courses of action. So we can think, you know, in very conceptual terms, how is it that you make these predictions? Um, 
Well, there are many ways to address this problem, and some could go into more detail, but I would say a good kind of a starting point is to think about um, you need two core ingredients. One is that you need to kind of understand and represent the state of things, the state of the world. So we were looking at the, the funny meme where we've got these um, vehicles traveling and one of them's carrying toilets and one of them's um, an open top car. And so they're, they may be traveling forward and this is our representation of the state of things. And But that alone doesn't necessarily allow us to predict. What we actually have to do is use our mental simulation. We might have um, cognitive facilities, cognitive faculties, which allow us to um, use what we have learnt about how things change in the world in order to simulate what might happen. So that's my really brief introduction into the idea of intuitive physics and mental simulation.